can you really send a particle into the past? Someone asked me this last week because New Scientist published an article about this. You all know that I'm fond of retrocausality and would really, really like to go back in time to warn myself about this YouTube thing. So I've had a look. So can you send a particle into the past? The answer is that that's a completely meaningless statement. Particles don't go into the past or into the future. Particles are simply at some position at some time. Or if it's a quantum particle, then they are at several positions. You see, a particle that goes left forward in time is the same as a particle that goes right back in time. Forward, backward doesn't mean anything. Unless you're a philosopher, then it means everything and also nothing at the same time. Shredding us meaning, if you will. Somewhat more technically, if you draw the curve of a particle into a space time diagram, then that doesn't have a direction. You can really only talk about things going forward or backward in time if you have something that tells you which direction is forward. For example, from entropy increase. If you see water drops lifting up from puddles and disappearing into clouds, you could say, well, they seem to be going back in time. But a single particle doesn't tell you anything about it. It's just a particle. It doesn't know the difference between yesterday's burrito and tomorrow's existential crisis. OK, so I hope that explains why the headline is nonsense. But that doesn't mean that the paper is nonsense. So let's look at what they did with the particles that supposedly went back in time. The paper in question is a general idea laid out last year with an experimental confirmation that just recently appeared on the archive. The general idea is this. You create an entangled state of two qubits. That they're entangled means that they're correlated in some property, but you don't know the value of the property for each individual particle. A typical example is spin. Think of it as an arrow that points into a specific direction. Let's say the spins are correlated in that they point in the exact same direction, but you don't know which direction this is. If you believe in the standard interpretation of quantum mechanics, then you'd say actually the spin doesn't have a direction until you measure it. The situation they look at is that you want to make a very precise measurement of some property of a quantum system. That could be, for example, some property of a material, magnetic field or such. You do this by bringing a quantum particle in the vicinity and then measuring how the quantum particle's spin changes. It's kind of like sniffing a t-shirt to see if it needs changing. To get any useful results, you need to repeat this many times. So it's a long sequence of particles going by the sample. However, the issue is is that this measurement works best for certain values of the spin. And you don't know this spin, so some of your measurement results are not very good. So what can you do? What you can do is to create a pair of entangled particles and send one past the probe. Then you first make a measurement on the one particle to figure out whether it was a good probe. If the first measurement says it wasn't a good probe, you throw the other particle away. If not, you measure it. This way you can improve the accuracy of the measurement. And they say it's something to do with going back in time because after you've made the first measurement on the one particle, it's like you retroactively select the spin at the time it was created. Because remember, in quantum mechanics, the idea is that the spin didn't actually have any value until you measured it. This idea is known as post-selection. You select certain quantum particles after you produced many more. Does this really have something to do with going back in time? I'd argue no. Let me give you an example that's a little easier to digest than spins and probes and entanglement. Suppose you post a comment on X Twitter and get a lot of replies, some agreeing with you, some disagreeing. You then go and block everyone who disagrees with you and hide their comments, like certain climate scientists are known to handle such things. But I digress. If you look at your post and the comments afterwards, it's like you went into the past and magically made those critics disappear. This is what post-selection means. Does this mean the comments you removed never happened? 
I regret to inform you that they still happened because you know what, you can't change the past. And it's the same with these post-selected states. Just because you decided to throw away some states doesn't mean you change the past. That said, this doesn't mean it's a useless idea because this procedure has a practical advantage and this is really what the paper's about. You see, by selecting only the best probes, you reduce the frequency with which you need to make a measurement to reach a certain accuracy. That's useful because a lot of detectors have a dead time after detection. Basically, after you make a measurement, there's a certain period in which you can't measure anything else. It's like like a stand-up comedian who delivers their jokes too quickly. You just can't laugh that much. You need a break in between. Same with these detectors. And if you select only the good probes, that gives the detectors breaks. So this idea is actually useful and has some practical purposes. But no, they're not actually sending particles into the past, because if they could do that, they wouldn't be writing papers about it. They'd be trading Bitcoin. Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos that you've been watching? Yes, there is. Have a look at Brilliant.org. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And there are adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And of course, I have a special offer for users of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.